What's going on guys, King Trats here, back with another video on the channel. And today we went a little homemade with it. We got a nice little feast prepared. Go down the line, start from this. Roasted pork tenderloin, done in the pressure cooker, but I used the bake, broil, both to cook that. Mashed potatoes, these are sour cream, garlic, and chives mashed potatoes. They smell so good. Obviously there's gravy with the world's worst lighting, so I have to apologize for that. My camera's not the best, but Hopefully in time I can get another one because those things, they cost a little bit. Oh, yeah, of course, got to have the mac and cheese homemade. I actually steamed it. I tried something new, so I want to see how that turns out. And of course, for the health, nobody cares about these roasted Brussels sprouts, but I actually made them buffalo Brussels sprouts, so I tossed them in buffalo sauce after I finished cooking. But without further ado, what do I start with? See, I have a, a whole assortment of utensils. Utensils have become the hot button issue of what... I am doing every time. Some people say use the wooden spoon. Some people say don't use the wooden spoon. Some people say use a fork. We're just gonna see where this goes. And of course, extra gravy for the dippage. You know the vibes, you know the vibes. This is pretty close to what my family would eat on holidays. Actually, it's not close at all. Mac and cheese, that's pretty much the only thing that we eat on holidays. We don't eat mashed potatoes, usually it's candy yams, and it's some kind of chicken. We don't eat a lot of pork in my family. My dad never ate pork. It's a whole thing. And no, it's not because of religious purposes. He just didn't eat it. And I used to get mad because we couldn't get pepperoni on our pizza. But whatever. Let me get you some gravy dunkage. You know I gotta get this all over the camera and all over the table. You know how the vibes get down. That is a really, really dunkable, wild piece <laughs> of pork tenderloin. But it looks extra juicy. You hear that? Those are the flavor jets. They're always here. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Do you see this? That right there is the bark. That skin on the outside. Even though it's a tenderloin, it's a very lean cut of meat. If you cook it slow, you can get a nice, nice little sear on the outside when you broil it at the end. Maybe I'll do a video on how to cook that. Pork tenderloin, chicken tenderloin, turkey tenderloin, anything tenderloin. If you're being calorie conscious, very high in protein, very low in fat, very good calories per punch, worth the calories, very juicy, mashed potatoes, mushroom gravy. If you don't like mushrooms, I suggest you look away because there's one coming right for your face right now. Mushroom gravy. I love mushrooms. It's the vibes, man. It's the vibes. See what I'm saying? Why am I eating gravy and mashed potatoes with a fork? It don't matter. Oh, that's so good. The mushroom gravy is just mm, creamy mash. Got a little bit of texture to it. I like mine more closer to the whipped. I know a lot of people like their sort of like smashed potatoes. I like more of the whipped one. I don't know why, but it's like delicious potato baby food. What a terrible analogy. But get in there and get one more. Let me get one more with the gravy. We gotta get some on the table though. Did I get, there it is. It's not a full king video, unless I, God, man, this is not going to last long. This is not going to last long. Let me get some of that, some of that, I don't like, I'm sorry I bit that. I wasn't supposed to put it to the camera. I did this a little different. I used some of the drippings <laughs> from this, and I boiled the noodles in them. So, this is more like baked mac and cheese, because I baked it off at the end. That, that just added a little something to it. Added a little bit of seasoning to it. Nothing too crazy. You know, most people like theirs. Basic, a lot of cheese. I just wanted to add a different flavor profile to it, so I added kind of some spicy seasoning to it, make it spicy. I was gonna make buffalo mac and cheese, but then I realized it would be bad for my toilet. So I opted away from that and just went with buffalo. Brussels sprouts, switching back to the fork. Come in here, come in here. Nobody likes sprouts. I'm telling you, just give them a shot. I know people just hate on sprouts, man. They hate on sprouts. Baked in the oven. Garlic powder. Onion powder. Sea salt. Oh, man, that's good. Y'all gotta, I'm telling you, man. I, look, I get it. Nobody eats vegetables. But as I got older, I don't know if it's just the old man in me. I don't like this little ass pork. 
Y'all eat with forks. I rarely have ever eat with forks. Rarely. But I'm trying to switch my utensil game up. You know the wooden spoon's coming out either way. That tenderloin is so juicy. And it's got that nice crust to it. I use a nice kind of like a teriyaki glaze. You feel me? Are you here? The flavor just working for you yet? And it's so tender. It just melts in your mouth. You know, you don't need anything crazy to cut it. You just... So yeah, I'm not, I'm not working. It's not steak. It's not tough. So, mm. 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 <laughs> I know why y'all think I'll be on that 420. But I really don't. I get like this when I'm tired. And I'm tired. I don't know what you guys do if you're in school or if you work, but when you get that long job, when you get that long hours, you start getting loopy. At least I do. It's just been very long days. But as I said before, I love the grind. I'm not complaining. I've been sitting in the house for half the year. So I'm just... I'm raring to go. I get up every day, go through my routine in the morning, a little meditation, shower, take my dollars for a walk, make my black coffee, and I'm just raring to go. Like I can't wait to get to work. I know it sounds crazy, but I think anybody will tell you if you love what you do, it never feels like a job. I'm very blessed in that sense. Oh, God. I like this is so good. I'm so glad I have extra. Because honestly, I want to drink this. Oh, man, yeah. I'm going to leave a little pool over here just for, like, dippage. Get this. Oh, I want to use it. But I can't pick up the... Do y'all do this when y'all eat? Like, be worried about utensils and stuff? I know a lot of people seem to be worried about what utensils I use. I get it though, because you're watching. It's like watching a movie and watching someone in a horror movie run up the stairs. Instead of out the front door, and you're like, what are you doing? I get it. I get it. It's funny because in real life, and Ross says this is in real life, I'm talkative. But not like this. Only in certain situations. I tend to just kind of lay in the cut and assess a situation instead of like, you know, just walking in and be like, oh, here I am. I never want to be the loudest man in the room. That's just not my style. I'd rather kind of survey, see what's going on. Of course I'm sociable, but I never walk in a room full of strangers and start trying to draw attention to myself. You know, I try to just Blend in as much as a 6'1", 225 pound black guy living in the suburbs can blend in. <laughs> you know, it was different growing up. Very blended community. Minorities. You know, there were a lot of white people too. But it wasn't very multicultural, you know. In New Jersey, especially because a lot of people here are first and second generation removed from coming from another country. So a lot of my friends' parents didn't speak English or it wasn't their first language or it was broken English. So it was very multicultural. So I never felt uncomfortable. I'm sure anybody feels uncomfortable if they're like the only person. And I'm not just saying race. I'm just, if you're the only person like you, like say you're like, I don't know. It's not early 2000s, but say you were like a skater or a goth kid and you walk in a room full of like preppy, you know, Harvard students. And here you are 
black nail polish and eyes eyeshadow, it might feel a little awkward. You know, so sometimes, given my situation now, I'm not living the burbs. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm not saying I go through anything like that, but sometimes I just feel awkward. It's awkward. You know, it's like awkward. Just like, I just need like one more black dude to come in. <laughs> it's funny because when I was in college, I went to school in Iowa. So if, if you were, if you were black, Odds are you played sports. There were some that didn't, but for the most part, I would say like the large majority. So you had, obviously you had teammates of other races and other, other nationalities, not nationalities so much, but backgrounds, ethnicities. But like on campus sometimes, you walk in the room and people would say, they probably stare at you because you know you're an athlete too. I'm not just saying, I'm not saying it in any other way than that, but. I'm sure anybody feels this way. If I was, no, I wouldn't. I was going to say if I was in a room full of women and I was a guy, just me, I'd feel awkward. But nah. <laughs> but nah. I'd be rad, but oh, cool. Kind of the opposite. You know, you know what do they call parties that just have guys there? You don't want to be there, though. Not to say that, like, dudes just don't hang out, just... At a party. I'm a social butterfly. I'm not even looking for any. I'm just, I just like to talk to different people. Once I assess the situation. Is it normal to say. Well, this is like. This got to be like 10 minutes. And I'm like three quarters of the way done. <laughs> oh no. This is the spot today. I had a pretty hard training session. Finished building my big powered weight stack that we had to put in. Tried to test drive it. Did a back workout. I'm still a little sore. A little feeling it. You know, I, I did work out during the lockdown. But it's just not the same. I don't like working out in my house. I know there's a lot of people that do it. It's just not the same. Like, the couch is there and I'm like... You know, I don't know how many people I know or clients that I've had that they tell me they have a treadmill in their house or some of them have like, you know, like bow flexes, like the home gym kind of thing. And they're like, yeah, it's a coat rack though. <laughs> I don't even use it. And I totally understand. It's not really laziness. I just feel like in order to like be active, in order to work out, you got to get out of the house. You know, and it wasn't possible really this year. So... I haven't gained weight during the whole thing, but I just feel soft. You know, like I feel like a lot of my muscle mass is gone. I, I kind of briefly touched on it before, but you know, this whole thing that we've had this year, this virus, I got it and I got it early. So I think I got a stronger strain than most people because, excuse me, the people that I know that had it, So, oh, yeah, you know, I just had a little headache for two days. Not me. Oh, no, no. Not your boy. Bro, I can't believe how fast I'm eating. <laughs> this is so good. It is good, though. But I had fever. I had, I couldn't taste anything. I had The sweats, the cough, general fatigue. I could barely get out of bed. And it lasted for me over a week. I was like seven to ten days. Again, this was like right when it hit in the U.S. So around March. Middle of March for me. And it was actually so bad for me. One morning, this is so good. You can see how fast this went. You can't tell me that I eat this fast. One morning, I woke up to go to the bathroom. And this might be TMI. Not number two or anything, but number one. But um, mid 
Midstream. I fainted. I didn't pass out, but I fell. I got so dizzy that I just, boom, hit the deck. It's even worse for me because I don't live with anybody. So I just had to take the L. I guess it's worse if you do. I mean, I've had to help, you know, when I live with somebody, I had to help them in situations that they probably didn't want me to see either. You know, but I didn't really, like, judge them by it. It just, you don't really... When you share a house with somebody, yeah, don't do that. I'll put it this way. Whether you have a roommate, best friend, girlfriend, husband, wife, make sure you really know that person before you move in. Because once they move in, all bets are off. Roommates will take your clothes. I've had that happen. I remember one time, in college I had a roommate. And I love the kid, you know, but I was mad that day. Came home from practice. This was uh, in the off season, so it was a Wednesday. One of the big nights that people went out in school was Wednesday. Like Wednesday, and then you went out on the weekends for the most part. I mean, if you're a freshman, you went out every day. You didn't care. But I was, you know, at that point, I believe a junior or a senior. But go home. Two of my teammates were like, yo, we out tonight? Well, you know how it was. It's the boys, we're going out. Bet. Go home, try to get dressed real quick. Take a shower. Throw my gear on. Feel fly. Huh? I wanted to wear this one shirt. It was an Abercrombie and Fish shirt. Right? Just, just shut up. <laughs> it was an Abercrombie shirt. But, you know, like when you were in school and you swole, had a little like swole to me. And I, I wanted to wear the Abercrombie shirt because it like hugged the, the, the biceps. You know, you know, it's, uh, you get it. You get it, you get it. You know, you know. I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh man, I must have worn it. I must have not washed it yet. Whatever, put on another shirt. Still feeling good. Get to the club. I walk in. The first person I see is my damn roommate. No, what's good, man? I'm like, bro, is that my shirt? He got my shirt on, bro. I was mad. He didn't ask me. One time he used my cell phone. He asked me, yo, can I borrow your phone real quick while my phone's not working? I had a girl at this point, too. This man was texting girls from my phone, bro. And then, see, y'all don't know the old days. The old days, like, this is like flip phone days. You know, they had cameras and stuff, but like not like iPhones now. iPhones really weren't a thing yet. I'm old. So, people on their text messages would put signatures at the end. It would be like, you know, it would say like, hey, how you doing? But then like every message would end with like, you know, date. It was a signature, like a, like a sign on. You can still do it, but no one does it. This man changed the signature to fit his and he was texting girls from my phone, bro. <laughs> you know how many girls that hit me up all weekend to my, where you at? I'm like, I don't know you. They're like, yo, this is not phone. Nah. Almost got me in trouble. And my ex was mad because she, I fell asleep one night. I was sick. You know, I'm not saying I was perfect because I, you know, I make girls crazy back then. I'm old. I was old. <laughs> I fell asleep. You know, crazy girls, bro. I love them to death. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. Like sometimes relationships make you crazy. It is what it is. But I fell asleep. I wasn't feeling good. I was like, hey, babe, come over. I'm not feeling good. You got any medicine? She, she brought it over. Like, oh, thank you, baby. Blah, blah, blah. I, I was innocent. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything. I swear. There's a text message in my phone. Because he must have texted somebody. And it said, Hey, yo, did you hook up with so-and-so that weekend? And they texted while I was sleeping. And you know she knew my password. Because all girls know passwords. Fellas, trust me, she knows your password. If you typed it in front of her, she got it. She's like, good. They got it. So I'm, I'm like a wall, like a fever, like a, like a migraine. I'm half asleep. Now I wake up, look to my right. I knew something was wrong because she was sitting up like this. There's two things, fellas, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm already done, bro. This was hella good. I wish I would have made more. I'm scraping. I'll tell you this before I leave. Two things. Number one, if your girl tells you we need to talk, you might as well get a shovel and start digging your grave. She got you. She got you. Just answer the question. It's coming. Just 
take a deep breath and understand that if you did some dirt, your dirt is about to be shoved on you. It is what it is. In this case, I thought it was innocence. I wouldn't even expect it, but she gave me that look. Number two, if you did do dirt, say you told her that you were staying home one night and you went on a date or you just went out with your friends. I'm not saying you were cheating, but you went out with your friends that night, but you told her you were staying home. And that was a Wednesday. So then you go chill with her on a Friday. If your girl looks at you and asks you where you were on Wednesday, please understand something. She knows already. She wants to see what you're going to say. You're caught. Just answer the question correctly. If they ask you a question, if your woman, your lady, your wife, your girl, if they ask you a question, trust me, the jig is up. They got you. Take the L. First of all, don't do it. But if you did it, take the L. They already know. They don't ask you, hey, so uh, where were you on Wednesday? They know. <laughs> Trust me. Somebody, look, they got spotters. They got like like spies. One of their friends say you went to a party and her friend was there. This is what their friend going to do. My phone's somewhere around here. They're going to see you. Watch this. Bam. Picture. Isn't this your man? If she didn't show up that night, which she might have, because that happened to me. <laughs> but if they didn't show up that night, they just waiting. And if you were the girl, they're probably going to show up. Or they already on a date with somebody else. But either way, that's my advice to you two today. I can't believe I'm done already. I didn't expect a 20-minute video today, but this was really good. Super juicy, super tender. Potatoes were right. Sprouts were perfectly seasoned. Mac and cheese was just bangers in that gravy, bro. I wasn't expecting to be done so fast, but since I'm out of food, I'm out of convo. Anyway, it's been your boy, King Strats. We'll be back tomorrow more content i love y'all the hand signs they made it to youtube